morning, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting us to this lecture series, um, Understanding the Self. So the first part here, we'll just briefly talk about um, the millennial, which seems to be a very popular term nowadays. No? A lot of uh, the invitations we get are about uh, talking about the millennial and describing the millennial. I'll be mentioning some statements about the millennials. And uh, raise your hand if you agree with the, with the statement. So these statements uh, were taken from newspaper articles who talk about the millennials. Okay, so the first one. They say that millennials tend to be overconfident or mayabang. Okay, <laughs> who agrees? <laughs> so may, there's that impression. Huh? Um, the other one, millennials thou are lazy or tamad. <laughs> so, ano naman? <laughs> they say that millennials are impatient or madaling mainip. So they seek instant gratification. Okay, that's a popular one. Doesn't have to be, to be naman the disorder, but uh, narcissism can be, you know, like they crave for self-admiration. Uh, they look at their achievements as talagang really grandiose and in Tagalog, bilib na bilib sila sa sarili nila. And uh, mataas yung level of self-interest. Na hirap sila to see the perspective of other people. So, who among you agrees that millennials tend to be narcissistic? This one naman, entitled, meaning millennials tend to feel that they deserve special treatment or they have certain privileges. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> Resounding yes. Okay, so experts say if you agreed or disagreed with those statements, you are actually both right and wrong. So, ibig sabihin, the literature is divided on this. Okay, so we're not quite sure how to describe the millennials. So, again, uh, I looked at some of the newspaper articles and interviews done with some experts, and this is what came out. They, they say millennials are apathetic, indifferent, walang pakialam, no? Um, this sort of became a popular uh, impression, especially during the time of the elections. And if you remember during the time that the uh, issue on whether or not to bury uh, President Marcos, former President Marcos in Libingan ng mga bayani. So whichever side you're on, uh, ang point here is that Ang impression sa millennials is that they walang pakialam and they're indifferent and clueless about martial law. But there are also those who say that millennials are also victims kasi uh, they're victims from a lack of education, which is our fault, that the older generation, that we failed in providing the right education for them. Okay, so again, let's look at um, what literature is saying about them, what the articles are saying about them. Who is the Filipino millennial? So this picture, I got this from um, an online newspaper. Okay. So according to statistics, millennials are those born between uh, 1980 to the year 2000, roughly. No? They are the oldest millennials are close to 40 already. And the youngest at 17. They comprise about a third of the population, and we call them digital natives. So what's important here now is to differentiate this group from a younger group, which we call Generation Z. So ito yung high school. These are our high school students. They are also called post-millennials, centennials, I-generation. So born between 1995 to 2010. So there's an overlapping. Okay, kaya may ganong confusion. They are described as comprising 30% of the population and are also digital natives. So if we think, uh, okay, what are digital natives? Why do we call them that? Well, uh, on average, um, our Generation Z and Millennials tend to spend a little over three hours on average on their mobile phones every day. And a little over five hours on their desktop, laptops, or tablets, again, every day. This is on average. UNICEF actually uh, came out with figures that show every half a second, a child, 
every day, a child goes online for the first time. So this is global. Okay? So you can see that this generation of millennials and um, Generation Z kids, they're so comfortable navigating their way through the digital world. So the way they communicate, the way they uh, access information, the way they share information is done through the digital world, digital means. Talagang they were born here and they're comfortable in this way of communicating. Yon. So if we look at, you know, what do they actually do online? Again, statistics show 40% of online activity involves social media. So less than 50% naman. So hopefully the other 50 is research. It's no wonder that sila yung kinakausap ng politicians, marketing agents, marketing ads. They are the target audience. Okay? And you would have probably seen this, and maybe you're still seeing it now, no, during the elections, after the elections, when we have political issues, very active ang millennials. As parents, as educators, should we be concerned? No? Because aside from being targeted by political ads and marketing ads, there is also the risk of cyberbullying, information overload, or getting the wrong information, actually, and getting information that is not evidence-based. There is the danger of identity theft, and of course, sexual exploitation, especially for our younger um, adolescents. So how can we protect them? Do we shut them off from the internet? Of course, that's impossible. Okay? Very, very brief lang on brain studies. Studies on the brain show okay, that when an enriched neuron, a brain cell that is enriched with information and experience grows. Okay? It looks like this bottom one, the bigger one. Okay? Yan yung picture ng isang enriched neuron. So this is the neuron of a person who is allowed access to experience and information. As compared to the one on top, an impoverished neuron, you know, it, it's very small, it doesn't doesn't have as many branches, okay? Kasi less ang opportunities niya to grow and connect with other neurons in the brain. So of course, we want our children to be enriched. This is a picture taken from an, a scan, an MRI scan, an fMRI scan. So you will see the colors represent the, the color yellow, green, and um, purple, blue, uh, no, actually the green, red, and yellow, these uh, colors represent brain activity. So you, you like seeing this. Now, ibig sabihin, there's stuff going on in the brain. So these two pictures, okay, these two brains represent the brain of one, an 18-year-old, and the other one is a 12-year-old. Okay, so as I said earlier, red, yellow, and green, these show brain activity. The 18-year-old actually has the brain that seems to have less activity, which is quite surprising to some. No? So you would think they have more going on there. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, we have this process that we all go through as we get older called pruning. That all these connections that are formed during childhood because of school, experience, etc., these, these connections go through... Uh, a pruning process wherein we lose the ones that are not really, I guess, important to us based on the life that we have. So I guess it's nature's way of making the brain more efficient and more beautiful. Okay? So as we get older, you can see trim yung connections natin based on what we need in life. So there is that saying, you use it or you lose it. So what does this also imply? Okay, as we get older, we can see here in adolescence, towards the young adult years, we lose connections that we don't need or use, but also there are so many sections that remain unconnected during adolescence. Okay? So th there is this term that uh, we study called plasticity. So this is the ability of the brain to respond to the demands of the environment. So ito yung kakayanan ng brain to rewire, to remodel itself based on what the environment is demanding from it. Okay? So a lot 
of plasticity goes on through the lifespan, you know. But what we're seeing here, it is during adolescence when this is so dramatic. The changes can be very, very dramatic and long-lasting. So very important yung role ng environment. Unfortunately, plasticity has its downside. Okay? So in the case of trauma in childhood, this can lead to a rewiring of the brain in such a way that the person, the individual, the traumatized individual responds to life with fear, with a lot of fear. Okay? That's one of the effects of trauma. And it sort of trauma confuses the brain. Okay? That's what the experts are saying. And in response to that, uh, the individual uh, resorts to anger, excessive anger, shutting down, or drugs, or all three. Okay, so it, it's very important no, to, to know this so that we know that these people who are addicted to drugs must have gone through something very difficult in life. So it's important to see them that way so that we, 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 we see them as people who need help. So we shouldn't just maybe treat them as criminals who society should get rid of them, but rather as individuals who need our support and our help. So I was very lucky. Uh, I was invited to join this team of um, psychologists. Um, we were asked to write this book um, about um, personal development. And part of that book was about um, the brain, what's happening there. So in that chapter um, that I helped write, um, we also talked about um, the brain having two pathways. So imagine it's like having EDSA and C5, okay? So both uh, are ways of getting from one end to another, but they're completely different networks. So one, in our brain, we have what we call the rational brain, ito yung logical side, ito yung thinking part, and we also have the emotional brain. So what we do know here is that these two systems tend to mature at different times. Okay, so if you look at the blue line, okay, that's the thinking part, that's the rational brain. And studies show that people mature in their thinking at around age 15, 16. At nagsistabilize na yan until young adulthood. Okay, so kaya nang mag-isip actually, mag-reason out logically ng kabataan at that early age. However, if you look at the red line, okay, this is our emotional maturity. It matures and reaches its peak at a slower rate. So even if we are mature at this point already, nahahatak yan ng emotional immaturity. And this is why young people need guidance. Also, in the book that we wrote, um, we talked about the issue of left brain and right brain. This is another interesting topic, actually. Um, a lot of people are described as being left brain when you're good in math, in words, in facts, in logic. Others naman are described as being right-brained when they're good with the arts, uh, creative, uh, when they're very creative, dance, etc. But what we now know is that actually it's not that accurate to call somebody left brain or right brain. We're both. Because we need both sides of the brain to communicate with each other. Diba? Yeah. So even if you're good with your reasoning, logic, with words, you still need your right brain to put it all together for you to make sense. On the other hand, you're a good dancer, you're good with music, you're good with art, you still need your left brain to know the sequence, the right combination of colors to come up with your artwork. So hindi na accurate actually to call somebody left brain or right brain. Yan. Okay, so... Um, why is this important? Well, we, we know that by raising awareness, we can help young people cope with their challenges by being aware of who they are, what their capabilities are, um, their strengths, and also their um, challenges. But we need to do so using information that is evidence-based. And through this evidence-based, our intention is for them to be mindful of who they are, of their capacities, and their challenges.
As mentioned earlier, adolescence is the last time in a person's life that the brain can be so dramatically overhauled. Yes, we can reinvent ourselves until the day that we die, but what we're just stressing here is the importance of that stage. It is also the best time for the kind of learning that tends to last. Okay, to, to yung mga life lessons that stay with us until we mature. Adolescence is the time when we redefine our, uh, our roles in society. Ito yung time that young people are able to think about the future. They're able to piece together uh, elements of their past, the present, and their hopes for the future. Ito na yung kakayanan nila. It happens during adolescence. And it is because of their capacity to self-evaluate and for introspection that they become more involved also in a lot of the social issues. Kaya very active ang adolescence sa social issues natin. And we see that, okay, um, in the news articles that we see every day. For instance, this is in the UK, actually. There's a strong move uh, to save the environment, to, si to stop using plastic. So young people ang gumawa nito. So they, they, they came up with this movement na ibalik yung paggamit ng recyclable bottles for milk. So this is in the UK. This was during the time of um, the protest actions against extrajudicial killings. And St. Sco was one of the schools. Um, I know FEU was also. Um, but St. Sco was one of the schools uh, that went out there, these young girls with their placards. Um, also Miriam College, okay? Because I lived near, so uh, I was able to uh, participate with this one. Okay, so young girls running out of the classrooms with this. This was during the, ano naman, Marcos Burial. Okay, so maybe these labels that we saw earlier are not that accurate. Because what we can see now, these millennials and this Generation Z people, these are our adolescents. And what we know now is that they are actually naturally curious and risk takers. They're designed to be that way because that is the time when they can learn these important lessons. They think more about social issues because that's the time that their brain allows them to. They are capable of putting together the past, present, and future. So ito yung they make meaning now out of their life, out of their past, and what they want for the future. Uh, the lessons can reflect and evaluate themselves. So maybe as a teacher, I feel, as a child advocate, I feel these are more accurate ways of describing young people. So during the time when there were uh, protest actions against uh, EJKs and um, there was an attack on press freedom, a lot of the students in UP rushed out of the classrooms to protest this and the administration supported it. Okay. I'm not saying we should encourage students to forget about class and no, no but there are certain issues wherein the students will learn more outside the classroom. This was during the school shooting in Florida. Okay. A lot of the students also walked out of the classroom, but they did so together with faculty, together with their teachers and school administrators, hand in hand. Okay, so we cannot close down the world for our young people, nor should we. Okay, but what we can do is to help them learn how to manage these experiences by providing the right psychological climate. So let's, as students, please ask your questions. Do not stop asking the questions. And tayo, as teachers, let us allow them to ask their questions. Let them be curious about themselves and about other people. Let them experience the world.